Epinephrine is a high yield topic. We give it a 5 out of 5. It's also known as adrenaline. Don't let this confuse you. It just kind of depends on which part of the world you live in. Here in America, we prefer epinephrine. In other parts of the world, they prefer adrenaline. But if you break the two words down, you can see that they're almost the same. Epi on top of, nephrine, the kidney, ad, which is on top of, renalin, which is kidney. One is Latin, one is Greek. It's just saying the same thing in a different way. Epinephrine is a natural hormone and a neurotransmitter. It's a catecholamine, which basically just means that it has a benzene with two hydroxyl side groups. And it is derived from the amino acid tyrosine. We are not covering the synthesis of these hormones in this lecture, but we have another lecture dedicated to it. Okay, so see that lecture if you need more information. Most of the synthesis of adrenaline in our bodies happens in the medulla of the adrenal glands. And lastly, epinephrine is a non-selective alpha and beta agonist. It just isn't very picky. On to the mechanism of action. And I guess I should explain to you that the numbers on the left-hand side of these bullets represent the yield or the importance of each bullet um, as far as your test taking or your general knowledge. We feel that the higher the number here, five, 5 out of 5 being the highest, the higher the number, the more important that you know that piece of data. As I've already told you, it's a non-selective agonist of both the alpha and beta adrenal receptors. That's the first bullet, but if you skip down to the very bottom bullet, you see this generally in textbooks. <clears throat> Basically, uh, what they're trying to say is that epinephrine as a molecule has equal affinities for each of these receptors. But that doesn't necessarily translate well into physiology. The truth of the physiology is a little bit more complex. And that's what the, the other bullets are talking about. So at a high dose of epinephrine, alpha effects are going to dominate. At lower doses or lower concentrations in the body or the blood, beta effects are going to dominate. And I remember that by thinking below. So the betas dominate at lower doses, below. So think about what, um, for example, if I gave someone a local injection of lidocaine with some epinephrine in it, which is very common, that's going to be a high dose in that local area. Alpha effects are going to dominate, which means uh, mainly you're going to see alpha-1 uh, effects, which is basically very strong vasoconstriction, which is very useful if you're excising, say, a lesion or a mole, because it constricts down on the blood vessels, the wound doesn't bleed very much, and also, secondarily, um, the lidocaine sticks around in the area for a little bit longer. Alpha-2, on the other hand, is decreasing the sympathetic tone to the area. Remember, because so the sympathetic presynaptic nerve is not releasing as much neurotransmitter. However, that doesn't really matter because the receptors are being stimulated by the epinephrine, not by the naturally released neurotransmitter, if that makes sense. For another example, how about the beta effects? We have a patient who is very allergic to peanuts, accidentally eats some, and begins to have an anaphylactic reaction to that, okay? And are beginning to have a difficult time breathing. And they inject themselves with an EpiPen. So in the local area where they shoot themselves in the leg, it's going to be a very high dose, and they're going to have some localized vasoconstriction. But as that spreads out through the body, they're going to have more, or they're at least going to have a lot of beta effects, such as the bronchodilation in the lungs, and they're also going to get some tachycardia and increased blood pressure. Those are the beta effects. Okay, so just because it stimulates the receptors equally, that doesn't mean it translates directly over to kind of a straight across the board physiologic response on all the receptors. One of the favorite questions that you will see or talk about in school is this chart on the right here, the effects of epinephrine on heart rate, blood pressure, and the peripheral vascular resistance. So to explain this chart, 
the x axis is time and the y axis varies um, it could either be the the heart rate or blood pressure or the peripheral vascular resistance so it's different for each one of these three the dashed line here is the moment in time when epinephrine is introduced to the system so what do you think the heart rate will do when epinephrine gets to the heart well the heart rate is going to increase and then slowly go back down after the the drug is metabolized what about the blood pressure what do you think the blood pressure is going to do with epinephrine well you need to remember blood pressure is broken down into, into two parts there's the systolic and the diastolic the systolic is going to go which way up the beta 1 receptors are being stimulated so the heart is going to contract harder and faster this is going to increase the systolic blood pressure what about the diastolic blood pressure well it's actually going to go down a little bit so you're gonna have a widening of the pulse pressure that is because partly at least of this last point the peripheral vascular resistance will actually go down why will that happen I thought alpha-1 was a peripheral vasoconstrictor well that's true but the dose isn't high enough to constrict down all those peripheries you're actually going to be in the beta range and remember beta-2 is a dilator okay so this isn't the last time that you'll see this chart this is a popular chart to discuss and even test questions will come off of this clinical uses of epinephrine include cardiac arrest resuscitation and this should make sense just because of the effect that epinephrine has on the heart it stimulates it it gets it going again it jars it next you could use it for extreme cases of bronchospasm such as acute asthma or anaphylaxis and again we talked about that that makes sense right the beta 2 effects are going to open up bronchi so for this next bullet I hinted at it before but I didn't explain it really well I think epinephrine is very commonly mixed with lidocaine for dermatological procedures such as removing a mole the reason is is that the lidocaine by itself would quickly be washed away from the the area by the action of the capillary blood so within only a few minutes you would lose your anesthetic and the patient would be in pain if you inject a lidocaine epi mix well the epinephrine causes strong vasoconstriction in that local area thus it increases the length of time that the anesthetic is in the area also you'll notice if you use this that the skin right around where you inject blanches and that's for the same reason because the blood vessels are constricting down that's also useful because then when you excise the mole or do your work there's much less bleeding it gives you a chance to achieve hemostasis a little bit easier lastly open angle glaucoma not closed angle glaucoma open angle glaucoma basically it decreases the intraocular pressure by decreasing the production of aqueous humor by clamping down on vessels you don't want to give it enclosed angle glaucoma because it's going to cause medriasis and clamp down even further on the outflow through the trabecular meshwork. That's basically tightening down the muscles on the side of the pupil and thus squeezing off or pinching off all those little canals that allow the natural draining of aqueous humor, thus making your closed angle glaucoma even worse. Okay last slide for epinephrine the side effects we have talked in detail I think about these top two bullets basically I mean we know that epinephrine is going to cause the blood pressure the systolic blood pressure to go up sometimes way up also we know that it's going to cause the heart to beat faster and that's what the third point is about sometimes a lot faster sometimes within the range of being dangerous faster okay what if you have someone with a pre-existing heart condition or or a, a known um, issue of being prone to supraventricular tachycardia or, or other tachyarrhythmias well you need to be careful with epinephrine you don't want to cause that the last thing you want is a heart attack in someone 
that you were just trying to treat for a, a mild or a bland allergic reaction. So just, just keep an eye on that. Just be careful. Lastly, anxiety. Uh, epinephrine is going to make you very anxious, um, tremulous, fidgety, and shaky. It just isn't a very comfortable drug to take. Now how about two quick knowledge challenge questions. The first one, what is the mechanism of the decrease in the diastolic blood pressure with epinephrine? The correct answer is the last answer, D, stimulation of beta-2 receptors. Do you remember the graph that we talked about before? What happens to the peripheral vascular resistance with epinephrine? It actually goes down. It goes down because of beta-2 stimulation. Remember, beta-2 is a vasodilator. Now, I know what you're thinking. We talked about epinephrine being a vasoconstrictor, and we talked about how we use that with lidocaine and other things. Well, you need to keep in mind the dose. Very high doses, alpha effects predominate. So in a local injection, in that local area, there's a very, very high concentration of epinephrine. But if we're giving epinephrine to somebody uh, for systemic use, or if the body is releasing epinephrine as a natural hormone, the concentration is much less systemically. Does that make sense? And then do you remember how I said B low for beta effects at low doses? That's right. That's what we're talking about here. Beta effects at lower doses. Beta 2 dilation is going to overpower alpha 1 constriction at normal physiologic concentrations. So there is going to be a decrease in the peripheral vascular resistance. And the diastolic blood pressure is going to go down despite the systolic blood pressure going up. And that happens because of beta-1 stimulation, which results in an increase in cardiac output. And cardiac output is a function of the stroke volume and the heart rate, both of which are affected by beta-1. Okay, good job. So if you picked beta-2, awesome. Now on to the second question. And this one is a little bit tricky. I'm not sure if it's fair, but I'm going to go with it anyway, okay? So true or false? Epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, is the primary neurotransmitter of the sympathetic nervous system, true or false. So it's true that epinephrine is pivotal to our fight or flight response, our sympathetic response. But is it the primary neurotransmitter for the sympathetic nerves? No, it's actually norepinephrine. Do you remember that? Do you remember what neurotransmitter is released from the presynaptic side of sympathetic nerves? Norepinephrine. It's, it's by far norepinephrine. So while, again, epinephrine is very pivotal to the sympathetic response or the adrenaline surge or what we feel when we're being chased by a lion, it's not what's primarily released from the presynaptic nerve. 